Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi, good morning. Uh, I am Professor Bikas Medi. Uh, today I am going to talk about uh, what are the medicine drug therapy available for parasitic infestation. Now, as you know that we are in the developing countries and these parasitic infestation are very common compared to developed countries. Now, what are the parasitic in, uh, infestation? If we take an example that amoebiasis is very, very common here. So, these are some of the example of like what are the condition you can use antiprotozoal drug in case of a protozoal disease? So, number one you can discuss is amoebiasis that result infestation of antimoeba histolytica or dispar or monoski. As you know that malaria is very common. You happen to go to northeast or southeast Asia or Africa or Latin America, malaria is very, very common and that is result of plasmodium falciparum. Vibex, Ovel, Mallory. Now, another disease is Triposomesis, that is Triposoma cruci or Triposoma brucei or Rodensi or Gambinens. Now, if you happen to go to Bihar, Lismenes is, is very, very common there. So, organism responsible for Lismenes is, is Lismenia donovani, Brazilians, Mexicana. Then another disease is giardiasis because of giardia lambia or toxoplasmosis. I will discuss other protozoal disease also in a later in a slide. Now, coming back to drug therapy in case of amoebiasis, in day to day life it is very common in India. Now, if you look at that, that medicine available, some of these drugs that is affect only in the lumen, that is you call it lumen amoebocyte that is that means once you give it act on the parasite in the lumen of gastrointestinal tract and that includes some of this amide group like diloxonide furate nitoxamide 8 hydroxychloroquine uh, or idoquine or antibiotic like paromycin or tetracycline or erythromycin now there is also that situation where these parasites are also in a tissue that is in systemic. So, some of the drug it act on intestinal wall when it launches into liver like extra intestinal tissue. So, we use the drug like alkaloid imatin or dihydroimatin or chloroquine that is act on liver only. However, we have medicine the drug that is act on lumen, lumen as well as in tissue which is effective against the lumen and systemic form of this disease amoebiasis. So, you can take an example of the drug like nitroimidazole. All this imidazole group of drug like metronidazole, tinidazole, orinidazole or seconidazole, these are effective in both in lumen and also in intestine, lumen in intestine within and also in the liver and tissue. So, you can use this type of drug like imidazole group of drug in case of both this infection. Now, drug which are more common in the lumen are used is diloxide furate and basically this drug is directly act as an amoebicidal, amoebicidal action and it is active against a non-invasive form. <coughs> now, when you look at the mechanism of action, so, the precise mechanism of action is not known, but it destroys trapezoid that eventually form into the cyst. So, you get an effect. So, if cysts are excreted by the person infected with and they are asymptomatic amoebicides. So, this drug mostly causes nausea and most common complaint, patient complaint is platoonus or puritas. Now, another group of drug is idoconal 
which is also luminal amoebocyte. Though here also the mechanism of action is in precisely you do not know, but it is effective in against the trapezoid. And this drug is poorly absorbed through the GIT. So, you get a high concentration in gastrointestinal tract and that is why it is more effective. There are some side effects like nausea, diarrhea, puritas or sub acute myelo optic neuropathy. We have to be careful with this drug that it causes sub acute optic neuropathy or it can also cause iodism. So, this is also a luminal amoebocyte. Another antibiotic which is used is aminoglycoside group like peromycin. And this drug acts as a luminal amoebocyte and it is no oral absorption is there, but uh, if you see that it is very effective and mechanism of action is it directly um, has a amoebocidal action because it causes leakage by action on cell wall of the membrane of parasite. So, indirectly killing the bacterial flora also and essentially for proliferation of pathogens in amoeba. Now, as you know this is aminoglycoside, moment you see that they have a class effect like you talked about the idea that it is causes autotoxicity or nephrotoxicity and this drug is particularly people reported with reversible hearing loss around 2 percent. Otherwise, it causes nausea, vomiting, diarrhea or people might complain of abdominal cramp and rarely some people they develop skin rashes, those who are allergic to this drug. Now, coming to that drug which is effect on tissue, amoebocyte, like we have talked about imitin and dihydroimetin, these are tissue amoebocidal drug. Now, how it act? Basically, it inhibit protein synthesis via blocking of translocation of tRNA and amino acid complex and that is how it has a efficacy or it is effective in tissue amoebocidal. Now, adverse drug reaction is most commonly occurs is nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, but one has to be careful that it causes cardiomyopathy or polymyopathy. So, we have to look for that in a evaluation that in order to avoid cardiomyopathy and polymyopathy. Due to the life as a physician, we prescribe invariably metronidazole, tinidazole, seconidazole. So, this drug is a mixed amoebocidal, metronidazole, it is a imidazole group of drug and this is a drug of choice for intestinal and extra intestinal amoebiasis. Now, how it act? It act on trapezoid with no effect on cyst and this nitro group of metronidazole reduce the pathogen leading to cytotoxic and it reduces the product that bind to DNA and protein and ultimately it results the parasitic death is occurs. Though because of compliance issue like it is usually given in you know uh, amoebiasis you give uh, 3 times in a day for 7 days 500 milligram. However, people stop it in between the compliance issue because that is the reason there are a lot of resistant cases due to decreased ability of you know organism scavenging that oxygen and decrease paradoxin gene transcription. So, we have to motivate the patient that at least they complete the course. Now, normally when you start with metronidazole, people usually complain of one of the common area is metallic taste. However, there could be anorexia, nausea or dry mouth or some people they develop headache and one has to be careful that those who are alcoholic with this metronidazole and tinidazole, they develop disulfurium like reaction. So, if they take metronidazole with alcohol, there will be flushing. Otherwise, we have to be careful about peripheral neuropathy and also seizure susceptibility is there and also some people they develop hypersensitivity. So, one has to be careful when you start metronidazole in case of any central nervous system infection or there is a history of epilepsy or there is a bleeding disorder increased prothrombin time or in chronic alcoholic as I have already said that there is a 
disulfurium like reaction like flushing along with alcohol and metronidazole and you try to avoid in during the pregnancy during at least the first trimester. So, this is very common drug there are some ADR we have to avoid and you have to take the precursor. Now, when you categorize with amoebiasis with clinical presentation and what are the drug you give the first choice second and what are the alternative option we have available. Now, when you get a patient of asymptomatic intestinal infection, so usually you prefer a luminal agent that is you can prescribe diloxonide, fluoride or idoquinol or peromycin. Second thing is in case of mild to moderate intestinal infection, you can start with metronidazole or you can give alternative tinidazole plus luminal agent. Of course, we have an alternative agent like erythromycin, we have tetracycline plus luminal agent. Now, what happen in case of severe intestinal infection? So, you have an option of metronidazole and tinidazole plus luminal agent. However, in case of severe, alternatively we can have imatin or dihydroimatin or tetracycline along with luminal agent. Now, in case of extra intestinal like those people are suffering from you know hepatic abscess or there is a amoeba or there is a extra intestinal disease, we give the treatment of metronidazole or tinidazole in combination of luminal agent and alternatively we have imatin, dihydroimatin, chloroquine in liver abscess plus luminal agent. Now, coming back to one of the most common disease particularly India, Southeast Asia or Africa or Latin America, it is a malaria. Now, if you see that we have many drugs, but we are concerned about resistant to drug therapy in case of malaria. Like we have discussed with metronidazole in amoebiasis, there is a resistant. Now, if you classify this anti-malarial drug, like we have a class of 4 amidoquinolone. So, one of the most common drug we use is chloroquine then amodioquine, then piperquine. Now, another group of drug is 8 aminoquinolones where we use for radical therapy primaquine, tefaquine or quinolone methanol is mefloquine or we have a alkaloid group of drug which is used for like plasmodium falciparum like quinine, quinidine or bioguanides like proguanil or chloroproguanil. Now, we have another group is dihydropyridine is pyrimetamine and we also use sulfonamide derivative drug like sulfoxin or dapsum though it is an anti laprotic drug it is still it is an anti malarial activity is there then sulfa methoxypyrazine. Now, some of the group of drug we use antibiotic like tetracycline, doxycycline, clindamycin it has a potent anti malarial activity. Then, sesquitone lactone derivative like we have a artemisinin compound group of drug like RT sunet, RT meter, then dihydro artemisinin group, then amine alkaloid like halophentrin or lumophentrin, then naphthol group pyrimetamin or naphthoquinolone it atovaquine. Now, we have to remember that none of this anti malarial drugs it kill sparozoid. Like you can take an example of artemisinin, it only inhibit the early phase of this parasite. So, it is not truly possible to prevent the infection. Now, second thing is a single anti malarial drug, it is not effective. Like many times we talk about FDC, fixed dose combination. Now, these are the disease we promote, there should be a fixed dose combination in order to combat the resistance. One of this uh, you know example is malaria, leprosy, tuberculosis or HIV. So, here you can see that there are a lot of fixed dose combination is available and being an academician or physician we promote that there should be fixed dose combination for malaria in order to combat resistant cases. Now, just quantify the different group of drug and what is the effect on sparozoid or 
in case of a primary in the livers or hypnozoid or in a stage of asexual in the blood or gametocyte in the blood. Now, if you take an example of artemisinin, just look at in sparozoid there is no activity. Similarly, in primary liver also, hypnozoid also. However, it is effective in asexual phase and it inhibit, it has a positive effect on gametocyte. Take an example of chloroquine or quinidine. It has effective in asexual blood or gametocyte. Similarly, mefloquine also it has asexual or atrophoquine, it has effect on primary site in the liver or in asexual or gametocyte. Now, as you know that primaquine is a use for radical treatment. You can see that effect on primary hypnozoid or gametocyte. So, you can have a comparative evaluation that different group of antimalarial drug, how does it act, how it prevent or how we can use for management of malaria. Now, when you talk about management of malaria, antimalarial therapy is given by following way. Some people they wanted to visit the endemic area. So, you give a profile exhibit, casual profile exhibit. Basically, this therapy it destroys the parasite in a hepatocyte and it prevent invasion into erythrocyte. So, you can use the drug like primaquine or proguanil. Of course, you have to take a history that is the patient is G6PD deficiency, then you are not going to use primaquine because there is chances of hemosuria, hemolytic anemia. Now, another form is suppressive profile exhibits where you see that it suppresses the erythrocytic phase and thus it attacks the malarial fever and it is used for prophylactic purpose. So, what are the drug we use for prophylactic purpose is commonly used drug like chloroquine, proguanil, mefloquine or doxycycline. Similarly, those who are developing already developed the disease, they are suffering, we use for clinical care. Like in case of erythrocytic schizontocyte, we use the drug to terminate the episode of malarial fever. So, based on that faster acting, you need an immediate action that you use chloroquine, we use quinine, mefloquine, atrophoquine, artemisinin compound or there are group of drug which is slowly and lower efficacy like proguanil, pyrimethamine or sulfonamide or tetracycline. But basically, we will like to prefer those who are a faster acting where patient will get immediate care. So, this is what we need to select the drug. Now, you talk about radical curatives. That means, it eradicate all form of plasmodium vivax and ovel from the body. And this also include a suppressive drug like plus hypnozoidal drugs. Then we have a gametocidal which destroy the gamete and prevent the transmission of the disease. So, we have a drug we use for primaquine, artemisinin compound, chloroquine, quinine, proguanil, pyrimetanine. So, several drugs are options are available for gametocidal. Now, most recent and very effective the drug we have is artemisinin and its derivative. As you can see that we have dihydroartemisinin, artemeters and artesunate. So, when you call artemisinin compound, so there are several drugs are there. Now, how does it act? Basically, it react to heme causing the free radical damage to parasite and particularly the parasite membrane and that is why it killed the tropozoid of erythrocyte. So, therapeutic use of artemisinin basically when there is a blood schizontocyte or it is also effective in severe falciparum malaria, particularly in resistant cases where chloroquine resistance strains are being reported in malarial parasite that particular area. So, it is strictly recommended for given for combination therapy as we discussed earlier. Why combination therapy? In order to prevent the resistance. Though, when you look at the ADR profile, it has a dose related reversible change, decreased reticulocyte count or neutrophilic count or it might also increase the 
transaminase enzyme, but it is reversible. But one has to be careful that you are not going to prescribe in case of first trimester of pregnancy because we do not have a data and those children having less than 5 years because we do not have a data you try to avoid the artemisinin compound. Now when you talk about artemisinin based combination therapy and what are the drug it has a better efficacy and safety in terms of combination therapy you can see artemisinin with lumopentrin, artesunate with mefloquine, artesunate with amodicone, artesunate with sulfamethoxidol plus pyrimetamine, artesunate with pyrumide, pyronaridine or dihydroartemisinin plus piperquine. So, these are the best combination when you talk about artemisinin with lumopentrin or mefloquine, amodicone. So, this has been in clinical trial or multicentric clinical trial shows that it has a better efficacy in order to combat the resistance of this malarial cases. Now talk about another drug is atrovoquine. Now how it acts as anti-malarial? Basically it inhibits that BCL complex in the mitochondria. So it is affecting the pyrimidine biosynthesis. So absorption is increased with fatty meal biliary excretion is more than 94 percent and it is also excreted in unsensed form in the stool. Now basically we use this as a chemo malaria chemo prophylaxis, particularly when you find an uncomplicated falciferum treatment. It has also ADR profile like you know GI symptoms, people complain of headache, rash or raise of hepatic enzymes or it is also been carefully evaluated that there is also raise of amylase. So, there could be chances of bronchiitis. Now, proguanil, how it act? It inhibit dihydrofolate reductase. So, if you inhibit dihydrofolate reduct reductase, it result inhibition of DNA replication. Basically, it is metabolized in the liver and it form an active form cyanogualin or inactive form is 4 chlorophenyl guanidate and it is used for therapeutic purpose in primary in liver stage or during the asexual RBC stage. So, it has also ADR of GI symptoms, but one has to be careful about hemasuria. So, you have to take the history that is there any discoloration of urine when the patient take this drug. Like in Pimacone also we discussed that if there is a history then one has to be stopped the therapy because there could be hemolytic anemia. Another drug is pyrimethamine, pyrimethane mine, it is structurally analogous to proguanil. So, if you look at the mechanism of action it is similar to proguanil, it also have a cross resistance with proguanil and this drug is excreted in milk. So, during the lactation you have to take care of them. So, what are the therapeutic use of this drug is it is basically active in asexual erythrocytic stage and compared to the other one it has a lesser efficacy particularly on tissue like hepatic form and it do not eradicate hypnozoid. Now, one has to be very careful that before you give the drug you take a history of hypersensitivity or you have to see that is there any megaloblastic anemia and it is also teratogenic at higher doses. Also, you have to you cannot give it in during the pregnancy and one has to be careful of agronolocytosis particularly when we give a combination with Dapson. Now, this drug is you have to remember that it is contraindicated those who are allergic to sulfonamide. So, normally when you take any drug therapy you take a detail of allergy history. Are you allergic to any medicine or are you allergic to any food? There is a history then you try to avoid. So, drug which is very common to allergy is sulfonamide or you avoid in lactating mother also and particularly in infant lesser than 2 month of age because there is no data available. Now, coming to the most commonly used drug is chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine. It is a 
very potent anti-malarial drug, but other than malaria, there are several indications also. It is used in rheumatoid arthritis or autoimmune disease. So, we can discuss the in detail. Now, basically chloroquine, how it acts? It interferes with heme detoxification. So, you get a result that in oxidative damage to the parasite. So, from chloroquine, there is an active metabolite like diethyl chloroquine or bidesethyl chloroquine. These are two active metabolites, it is released. And this drug chloroquine is basically, it is active against RBC stage of plasmodium vivax, oval, malaria. And of course, we have to see that chloroquine sensitive strain to particularly plasmodium falciparum and gametocyte. So, this is the agent of choice for chemoprophylaxis and the treatment for oval and malaria. Now, you have to remember that no malarial use like other than malaria, this is basically used as an anti-inflammatory drug. Why anti-inflammatory? Because due to accumulation of lysosome. So, in case of rheumatoid arthritis, you give analgesic, you also give chloroquine or autoimmune diseases like systemic lupus erythematous or sarcoidosis. This is also a preferred drug, a chloroquine. Now, as you see the ADR, there could be acute toxicity or there is a ADR for cardiovascular or CNS manifestation. Now, when you use this drug for a chronic purpose like rheumatoid arthritis, it causes retinopathy, people call it bullseye because it is deposited into the retina and it can also affect the hearing, autotoxicity. So, there could be toxic myopathy or cardiomyopathy, peripheral neuropathy and rarely it has been seen that it can cause neuropsychiatric disturbances. So, before you give and even if you give continuously, there should be monitoring. So, the precaution and recommendation Basically, it is not recommended in case of a epilepsy. Any history of epilepsy or seizure, you are not going to give prescribed chloroquine or if there is a history of myasthenia gravis. One has to be very cautious in case of advanced hepatic disease like fatty livers or cirrhosis or there is a history of neurological and blood disorders. You have to adjust the dose in case of any kidney problem like renal insufficiency and there is also hemolysis of the RICS. So, you have to take a history that uh, is this patient is G6PD deficiency, you are not going to prescribe like primaquine and you take the history of detailed history of hypersensitivity. So, it is avoided in psoriasis or porphyria cutinea tarda. So, there are several conditions you have seen that epilepsy or myasthenia gabies, you are not going to recommend. Those adjustment is needed for any hepatic problem like cirrhosis or fatty livers. There is chance of hemolytic risks. So, you avoid this drug in G6PD deficiency and in case of allergy also, you have to be careful. Now, we are going to discuss a very old drug, quinine and quinidine. And this quinine, it basically binds in to heme and what it does, it causes detoxification. And when you give this quinine, it is mostly concentrated in RBC and it is a better penetration in CNS also, it circulates in CSF. And that is the reason in case of cerebral malaria, it is more effective. So, this drug is preferred in case of drug resistance particularly you have to remember severe falciparum malaria. So, what are the ADR like we call it syncosim. People complain of hypoglycemia, they develop hypotension when it is given in a therapeutic or if you increase the dose. So, it is basically syncosim, it is affecting the auditory and visual disturbances. And one has to be, you know, careful about hypersensitivity. Now, this drug in black water fever, like tried a massive hemolysis, hemoglobinemia and hemoglobinuria, 
leading to anuria or renal failure. So, this is a rare type of hypersensitivity reaction to quinine therapy. So, one has to monitor carefully in order to avoid all the severe area. Now, we have to remember that following are the contraindication. As I said that take a detailed history of patient in case of allergy, hypersensitivity. Since it is affecting the you know autotoxicity, it causes tinnitus, then cardiac arrhythmias or optic neuritis. So, you continuously monitor. Another drug it is used basically for you know it is affecting the asexual forms is mefloquine. And how it act? It is it inhibit the parasite, particularly heme polymerase. And does it interfere with host material into parasite into food vehicle? So, what it does is it interfere with transport of hemoglobin from the erythrocyte to food vehicles in malarial parasite. Now, therapeutic use of mefloquine basically we kept it reserved for falciparum malaria or in case of fibrics we use for prevention of the treatment. It, it is used as a chemo prophylaxis those who are traveler to endemic area coming from developed countries going to Africa or South Asian country endemic areas. So, it is used mefloquine is used for prophylaxis. Now, what are the common area like GI symptoms? vomiting, nausea, people also complain about dizziness, some people reported with psychosis and seizure. So, you take a detailed history of do they have a past history of any seizure or epilepsy or any psychotic reaction, you know psychotic you know reported any problem. Then cardiac abnormalities, there is chances of hemolysis and agranulocytes. So, you go for complete blood test. Now, you need to remember that it is contraindicated in case of first trimester and you are not going to prescribe in case of any neuropsychiatric condition. Another drug is primaquine under the 8 aminoquinolone. How primaquine it act? It is not clear, but it proposed that may be because of generation of reactive oxygen species, it is act as an anti malarial. So, the therapeutic use, it is used basically in active primary liver stage and hypnozoid or it is also effective in gametocyte. So, basically this primaquine it is used for radical treatment, terminal chemoprophylaxis shortly before leaving the endemic area or it is used for radical cure that is more effective with concomitant when you use concomitant cisgenticide. So, it is one of the very good drug, but you have to see that you take detailed history easy person is he or she is G 6 P D deficiency. Normally, those people who are G 6 P D deficiency they carry that these are the drugs should not be prescribed. Of course, being a doctor you need to ask detail about history that whether he or she is G 6 P D deficiency. And in case of a mild anemia, meat hemoglobin, leukocytosis, you should avoid this drug. Another group of drug is PABA analog, para amino benzoic acid, sulfonamide sulfons. Basically, any sulfonamide group of drug you have to take detailed history of allergy also, hypersensitivity is very common. And this drug is also by dihydro, it inhibit dihydrofolate synthesis inhibitor, that is how it acts as an anti malarial. Now, one of the antibiotic we use is tetracycline, basically is a slow acting antimalarial cisgenticide. And another form of tetracycline, doxycycline, it is commonly used as a prophylaxis. Now, what we do in case of uncomplicated plasmodium falciparum malaria? In case of children and the adult, except in first trimester of pregnancy, we give artemisinin based compound for 3 days. Now, we have a artemisinin and we have lumofentrin, artesunate with atropoquine, artesunate with mefloquine, artesunate with sulfamethoxine, pyrometamine. So, we have several combinations which is effective in uncomplicated plasmodium falciparum malaria. 
Now, in case of a recurrent plasmodium falciparum malaria, what do you do? So, normally you give the treatment for 28 days. The failure of the treatment within 28 days, then we have a scope that we have to give alternative to like artemisin based compound co administered with doxycycline or clindamycin. Now, what happened after 28 days if it fail, then we have to give first line of artemisinal based compound. Now, in case of uncomplicated plasmodium falciparum malaria, especially if you have a special risk group like there is a pregnancy first trimester, the preferred drug is quinine plus clindamycin for 7 days. Now, in case of an infant less than 5 kg of body weight, we use artemisinin based compound at the same milligram per kg body weight we select or in case of a comorbid condition like people who are co-infected with HIV, you need to avoid artesunate or so because if they are receiving co-trimaxazole, then you have to avoid artemisinin with atropacin. So, in that case because they also receive the anti-retrovinal therapy like judubidin. Now, in case of non-immune traveler, we use artemisinin based compound or uncomplicated hyperparasitemia artemisinin based compound you use. Now, what do you do in uncomplicated malaria by other four species? If the malaria species is not known, you need to treat them as for uncomplicated falciparum. So, we have a chloroquine or in case of a chloroquine susceptible area, we use artemisinin based compound and chloroquine or chloroquine resistant cases artemisinin based compound combination therapy we use or if you find that chloroquine resistant 5x in first trimester of course, we have an option of quinine. Now, how do you prevent the relapse of plasmodium 5x and ovel? So, daily we give primaquine for 14 day the course it start 0 0.25 to 5 milligram per kg body weight. Now, in case of a severe malaria which is very difficult to treat, so we have to give a parenteral dose. Either you give IV or IM like artesunate compound and within 24 hours after at least parenteral 24 hours above therapy complete the treatment of 3 days of artemisinin based you know combination therapy. Now, if the artesunate is not available, what you do? So, IM RT meter is given preference to quinine. Now, in case of chemo prophylaxis of malaria, like we already discussed travelers. So, up to 6 weeks we give doxycycline 100 milligram for adult start 2 days before the travel and continue another 4 weeks time leaving the endemic area. And you can also give 6 weeks mefloquine 250 milligram start 2 weeks before and continue another 4 weeks for after exposure when you visit the you know endemic area. Now, coming to another parasitic infection is trip through trypanosomiasis. Now, in case of a trypanosomiasis, what are the medicine available, drug available is pentamidine, suramine, melarsopol, eplonidine, nitrofuroxymox and benzinidazole, benzinidazole. So, we have several compounds available for trypanosomiasis like pentamidine is a drug used, suramine. So, there are several compounds available. Now, when you talk about pentamidine, that mechanism of action it enter as a purine transporter to parasite and what it does it bind negatively charged DNA in the intracellular element. So, what it result it causes lipid peroxidation and at the same time it inhibit the enzyme. So, that is how it act as an antiparasitic of trypanosomiasis. Now, ADR if you see that it is given parenteral, so they are likely to have hypotensions. So, it should be monitored, it causes tachycardia or there could be reaction at IM site, intramuscular site or there is also report that it can cause pancreatitis. Now, in case of a nebulizer like it causes cough, wheezing, fever or decreased appetite. The drug suramine 
basically it is act inhibition of triposomal systolic serine oligopeptides. So, it acting through dihydrofolate reductase, thymidine kinase and several glycolytic enzymes are get inhibited. But one has to be careful that it causes hypersensitivity or it cross the blood brain barrier causes CNS toxicity and peripheral neuropathy or it can also have adrenal and renal insufficiency. So, it should be monitored carefully and those people they have a compromised kidney function you are not going to give the suramine. Now, another drug is melarosoprol. Basically, this melarosoprol it act by disruption of glycolysis or what it cause is it inactive the protein of parasite. Now, whenever it give it is causes febrile reaction, encephalopathy, peripheral neuropathy, myocarditis or hepatoninal insufficiency. So, one has to be very, very careful because all these ADR are very, very severe form including febrile or encephalopathy or peripheral neuropathy or myocarditis or hepatorenal insufficiency. So, when you give this drug one has to be careful that you are not going for a in case of a febrile patient or leprosy patient. And it is also contraindicated if you find there is a influenza or endemic or if the patient is G6 pedi deficiency. Another drug is eflunitrin. Eflunitrin is like mechanism action is irreversibly inhibitors of ornithine decarboxylate which is required for polyamine synthesis. Now, if you see that ADR profile of this drug eflunitrin, it causes fever, it causes anemia, it causes leukopenia, it might cause diarrhea, seizure, reversible hearing loss. So, you are going to take a history that is there a patient having any epileptic fit or seizure or if there is any problem in hearing because it may be the permanent. So, one has to be very, very careful about giving this drug. Now, another drug is nifuroxymox, nifurtimox. So, nifurtimox is basically it act as antiparasitic because it causes formation of nitroanion free radical metabolite and that lead to DNA damage. So, basically it is a cytotoxic to parasite. Why cytotoxic? Because it produces superoxide anion and hydrogen peroxide and it inhibit tryptophan reductase. Common example of this ADR with this drug is anorexia, nausea vomiting, peripheral neuropathy, CNS toxicity, myalgia and hypersensitivity. Another drug is benzonitrozol. So, how it act? It is it release a free radical generation leading to DNA damage and cellular machinery. So, this is also reported to it allergy, dermatitis, peripheral neuropathy, insomnia and anorexia. Now, coming to chemotherapy of one of the most common disease particularly in India state like Bihar, where there are a lot of cases of leishmaniasis. Now, in case of the leishmaniasis, we have the option available is sodium stilbogoconate or meglomine antimoniate or alternative we have is miltophosin. Of course, nowadays we have a, a special liposomal preparation of amphotericin B, but otherwise we also use antibiotic like peromycin or pentamidine. Now, coming to the older one is sodium stilbogoconate. Now, this is basically a pentavalent antimonial compound and how it act as a against the leishmaniasis is it interfere with tryptophan reduction syndrome system and metabolism of glucose and fatty acids is altered. Now, this sodium stilbogoconate they have a ADR profile it causes headache, it causes nausea, vomiting, myalgia, arthalgia and reversible polyneuropathy. But one has to be careful about pancreatitis and hepatorenal dysfunction. It also suppresses bone marrow 
and it causes QT prolongation, cardiac arrhythmia. So, there should be monitoring when you give sodium stilbogoconal. What about miltoposin? It is the first oral for visceral dyspanesis. So, basically it is acting as a you know mechanism of action that it proposed the target of inhibition of protein kinase. Protein kinase C, phosphatidyl biosynthesis or sphingomyelin biosynthesis leading to it causes apoptosis. And miltoposin also causes anorexia, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, nephrotoxicity and hepatotoxicity. Now, we have so many cases of reporting GRDSs. So, we use the drug like metronidazole, tinidazole, it is a very good drug and effective in GRDSs. Or that option, treatment option available for toxoplasmosis like we have pyrimidine plus sulfadiazine along with polynic acid or spiramycin is given until delivery to prevent vertical infection, especially that in case of the pregnancy, you use this drug to prevent toxoplasmosis. Now, other some of this you know parasitic like drug of choice for trichomoniosis, you use metronidazole and tinidazole or some of the rare is like drug of choice or babesia species like we use clindamycin and plus quinidine or cryptosporium nitroxy might we use and drug of choice for cyclospora, isospora we use trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole or drug of choice for microsporodia, commonly used drug is albendazole or diabetin fragilis indacrinolone. So, there are options are available along with the different parasitic infection. Now, coming to most of the common you know anti the helminthic infections and what are the options we have. If you classify anti helminthic drug like one group is piperazine. So, we have diethyl carbamazepine, diethyl carbamazine, piperazine citrate. Second option is benzimidazole is albendazole, mabendazole or thiobendazole. Then heterocyclic group of drug is oxamidine prazicuntal or naturally product you see that ivermectin, avermectin. Second group is phenyl pyrimidine is this pyrantel, oxantel, amide group is niclosamide, nitro derivative drug is niridazole or imida, imidazothiazole is levimisole. So, there are several drugs if you classify anti helminthic are available and it has a potent efficacy and safe. Now, look at different anti helminthic like helminthic infection and what are the choice we have. Now, when you talk about ascaric lumbricoids like we have mebendazole, we have albendazole, we have parental. In case of infestation with encyclosto duodenally, we have parental, mebendazole, albendazole or in case of a nicotor americans, we have mebendazole, albendazole or enterobias vermicularis, we have parental, pyrantel, mebendazole, albendazole or strong glidos, sterocolis, ivermectin, trisuria, trisuria is mebendazole, trisina spirillis is albendazole. So, again as you see the different parasite anti helminthic, we have the several options are available for management of parasitic infection. Now, in case of Eucteria bancrofti, we have diethyl carbazine or ivermectin, then Rakuculus medianesis, we have used metronidazole, Tinea sagineta, praziquintel or niclosamide, or Tinea solium, praziquintel we use, or Hemo hymen lapsis nana, praziquintel, or if in case of the neurocystosarcosis, it is very common and patient present with uh, form of epilepsy, we use albendazole or isinoconus granulosus albendazole or isinoculus multicoralis is albendazole. So, we have option for different anti helminthic drug. So, we start with mebendazole, basically it is a synthetic bio benzyl midazole. So, how it act is it bind to parasite 
particularly beta tubulin in microtubules. So, it inhibit the, their polymerization. So, if you look for pharmacokinetically, it is a poorly absorbed and it has a protein binding is more than 90 percent. It is a high phosphorus effect and it is 70 to 90 percent oral dose is excreted in phase stool. So, when you look at the ADR profile, it is causes nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain and some people they develop hypersensitivity. But one has to be careful about agranulocytosis or some of them they develop alopecia or there is an increased liver function test like enzyme, liver function enzyme. So, though it has been reported with teratogenic, so we do not prescribe in case of pregnancy. But one has to be careful, it should be cautiously given in children lesser than 2 years because we do not have, we have a limited data and there is chances of that it might cause convulsion with mevendazole. Now, what about albendazole? Albendazole is mechanism of action is similar to mevendazole and it is administered in empty stomach. So, when it is used against intraluminal parasite, but with the fatty meal when it is used in tissue parasite. So, it is a luminocidal plus in a tissue also it is effective. Now, ADR profile it is causes nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, headache, some people they develop insomnia, raise liver function test or kidney function test and also patient reported with pancytomia. Basically, it is exhibited at embryo toxic to animal. So, we are not going to prescribe in case of pregnant woman, albendazole. Then we have a thiobendazole, it is similar group of drug like mebendazole, but it has a another properties is it is acting as anti-inflammatory or analgesic or antipyretic action is also there. So, this drug also causes nausea, vomiting, loss of appetite, some people they develop headache and giddiness. So, thiobendazole is another drug like similar to mebendazole. Now, what about parental promote? Parental promote is activate, it is basically action is on nicotinic cholinergic receptor in the worms. Now, what it does is it result persistent depolarization and ultimately it leads slow development of contracture and in the worm it causes spastic paralysis and that is a drug, this drug is poorly absorbed because it is in a lumen it has a maximum efficacy though it might cause nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. So, this is basically act on cholinergic receptor leading to spastic paralysis in the worm and ultimately it get excreted. Another drug is piperazine and this piperazine is also causes hyperpolarization and this hyperpolarization is because of action of GABA agonistic activity. Now, with this effect on GABA, it lead to decreased responsive to contractile stage of acetylcholine. This piperazine also reported to dizziness, some, some of them they causes excitement or when you give higher dose, toxic dose, there is chance it can cause convulsion and maybe the date due to respiratory failure because it is inhibit the respiratory center. So, one has to be very, very careful about appropriate dose so that and also take detailed history of epileptic seizure or past history of epileptic seizure because if you increase there is chances of convulsion or respiratory failure because of depression of respiratory center. Diethyl carbamazepine, diethyl carbamazine citrate. Now, this drug it alter the micro filaria membrane and leading to phagocytosis by tissue macrophage, but not by circulating the monocyte. So, it is most common use as a anti filaria. So, ADR is nausea, vomiting, loss of appetite and easily those people start with therapy they complain of general weakness and dizziness. Ivermectin is one of the drug it binds to glutamate, gated chloride channels leading to hyperpolarization, more chloride channel inside the 
cell causes hyperpolarization. So, it causes paralysis of the worm. So, it has also CNS toxicity like people say depression, ataxia, dermatitis, but one has to be careful about ataxia. Though this drug does not cross blood brain barrier, but in case of meningitis, if there is any inflammation on meninges, definitely it will alter the permeability. So, when there is a meningitis, it increase or it cross blood brain barrier, so it should not be prescribed during that time. Niclosamide is inhibiting the glucose uptake and another action is oxidative phosphorylation and ultimately it interferes with anaerobic generation of ATP and that is how it acts as an anti-helminthic and usually this drug is reported to it, patient reported it nausea vomiting, constipation, people say that there could be abdominal pain and puritas. So, as you see that there are number of parasitic infections are there. You start from amoebiasis, then we have a common endemic problem is malaria, then other anti-helminthic drugs, but there is an option are available. Only thing it one has to be careful about that compliance of the treatment. For example, if you give amoebiasis 500 milligram metronidazole three times in a day, people take it one or two days they stop it and that is the reason there is a resistant cases. Now, another thing is that condition like malaria, we promote that it should be used a combination therapy or fixed therapy. So, all the factors need to be maintained and in order to have a successful drug therapy in parasitic infestation. So, if you have any questions, you can discuss. Thank you very much.